Mr. Speaker, with your permission, I would like to join other speakers before me in recording my congratulations to Ms. Julian Alfred on winning two medals for herself and for St. Lucia. Olympic medals, silver and gold. Mr. Speaker, it was really a joy to see how St. Lucians, both at home and abroad, came together with pride. It was a moment of history that all of us would be etched in our memories for our lifetime. Mr. Speaker, the performance of Ms. Alfred, I believe, is a motivation for our young people. Her resilience, her tenacity, her humility are attributes that are worth emulating. For me, I look forward to her continued success. And more than anything else, I look forward to the success of our other Olympian hopefuls. Mr. Speaker, I beg to present for first reading a bill shortly entitled Cooperative Societies. Cooperative Societies. Mr. Speaker, I beg to move for the suspension of standing order number 482 to allow the bill to go through its remaining stages at this sitting. Honorable members, the question is that standing order 482 be suspended in order to allow the, the member, the, the Minister for Commerce, to proceed with the remaining stages of the bill at this sitting. And now for the question, as many as that opinion say aye. Aye. As many as of a country opinion say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Leave is granted. Please proceed, Minister. Mr. Speaker, I beg to present for second reading a bill shortly entitled Cooperative Societies. Mr. Speaker, I am aware that I am standing between this honorable house and cricket. <laughs> the, the former takes priority. <laughs> I understand that, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, the bill for consideration is a cooperative society's bill, and the purpose of the bill is to make new provisions with respect to the registration, supervision, regulation, governance, operation, and management of the cooperative society. Mr. Speaker, this new cooperative society's bill has been in the works for some 11 years. And Mr. Speaker, it is the practice of my government, the characteristic of my government, to adopt a consultative approach when we present and work on matters impacting the people of St. Lucia. As such, Mr. Speaker, various versions of the bill were sent to key stakeholders over the past two years in particular for their comments. And I want to report today that the comments were incorporated when we first presented this bill almost a year to the date. On 12 September 2023, this bill was tabled in this honorable house. Mr. Speaker, the bill is a huge one with some 322 clauses and 15 parts, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, subsequent to the first reading, my ministry, in collaboration with the Attorney General's Chambers and the Financial Services Regulatory Authority, facilitated meetings with stakeholders, including 
the St. Lucia Cooperative League, the SDA Cooperative in particular, to discuss concerns and recommendations. And I stand here today to present a bill that is of interest to all the people of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, allow me to thank key persons in formalizing this bill before us. The Minister of Finance and my cabinet, the permanent secretaries of finance and the permanent secretaries of the Ministry of Commerce, the director of legislative drafting units and his team, past and present executive directors of the Financial Services Regulatory Authority and the Registrar of Financial Cooperatives and their teams, the St. Lucia Cooperative League, representatives of other credit unions, representatives of non-financial cooperative sectors, and staff of my ministry, in particular, our senior legal officer who's present here today. Mr. Speaker, this bill before us, when passed, will replace the Cooperative Societies Act, which is currently in force and which was enacted in 1999 as Act Number 28 of 1999. Mr. Speaker, this 1999 Act had for many years served as the Bible for the cooperative movement. It saw the growth of the movement from a very minor sector to a sector which is a billion dollar sector. With some information on the sector now, Mr. Speaker. The credit union sector is a critical player within the financial sector. And it provides an avenue for alternative means of savings and wealth creation. As at December 2023, we had some 16 credit unions here in St. Lucia with one credit union league. Mr. Speaker, the growth of the sector from 2013, total assets of just over 552 million to the assets now at 1.6 billion, a growth of 199%. Why, Mr. Speaker, during that period, loans has moved from 439 million to 1.176 billion dollars, an increase of 168 percent. Mr. Speaker, at the passing of the 1999 Act and prior to this enactment, all properties were treated equally, with non-financial and financial cooperatives. Um, being administered under a single registrar and regulated by the Department of Cooperatives. Mr. Speaker, you and others in this room may recall the 2008 global financial crisis. In June of that year, Mr. Speaker, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank Monetary Council insisted that the Caribbean Conference of Credit Unions with urgency develop a draft model cooperative societies bill to be finalized by the ECCB um, by that year, 2008. Mr. Speaker, we are now in 2024. The aim of this proposed bill, as I want to especially spe um, focus on, is the enhancement and sustainability of credit unions by improving requirements relating to licensing and reporting, creating practical criteria, and strengthening implementation of the legislation. Mr. Speaker, you, one may ask, why do we need to strengthen prudential supervision of credit unions? As with that of banks, the main reason is to protect the savings of members and to maintain the sustainability of the financial system. Mr. Speaker, in 2008, America's financial and economic structure caught a call, and by 2009, our region 
started to sneeze. In early 2009, the CL Financial Group based in Trinidad and Tobago collapsed and caused the failure of its subsidiary, British American Company and Colonial Life within the OECS region. Mr. Speaker, many St. Lucians suffered fate because of this collapse. Many St. Lucians lost all their savings. And Mr. Speaker, I must say the member for Beaufort South would be able to provide even additional information on this time and what happened here. Mr. Speaker, these concerns of the vulnerability of national and regional financial sector was not limited to credit union movements. As a result, St. Lucia in 2011 created by enactment the Financial Services Regulatory Authority, what we call the FSRA. Recognizing the need for additional regulatory scrutiny for credit union sector, the Cooperative Act was amended to recognize the FSRA as the Registrar of Financial Cooperatives. And that's a sector we call credit unions. Mr. Speaker, the provision of the 1999 Act have come to be seen as insufficient to deal with the developing regulatory landscape for financial organizations. Mr. Speaker, the increased interest in the vulnerability of the sector and perception of inadequate corporal governance and international standards within the sector have necessitated the introduction of increased checks and balances within the cooperative sector. With these reasons, Mr. Speaker, we could not ignore the request of the ECCB to have a new act. And as such, from 2013, upon receipt of the approved harmonized bill, consultation commenced on the review and tailoring of the bill to facilitate the development of a workable piece of legislation for St. Lucia. In 11 years of consultation, which has intensified over the past two years. Mr. Speaker, you and others will note that I have ensured on many occasions to distinguish between financial and non-financial cooperatives. We need to appreciate that many of the financial and corporate governance measures been introduced to the sector are geared at improving governance and monitoring of credit unions, and that some of these provisions would be too onerous for our smaller and less resilient, less robust non-financial cooperatives such as the farmers' cooperatives and the future cooperatives. Mr. Speaker, accepting the role of the FSRA as the Honorable Minister of Finance with responsibility for financial cooperatives, on many occasions throughout this bill has ensured that non-financial cooperatives are treated differently than financial cooperatives. Mr. Speaker, the notable changes in this new act starts with clause 7 subsection 10 there we see the registrar afforded the powers after giving a board of directors the opportunity to be held to be heard sorry at a meeting to remove from office all or any director where upon an examination of a cooperative society or on receipt of information the registrar is of the opinion that the funds of the cooperative society are not being managed properly or are not being protected. At clause 55, 1 and, 50, and clause 56, we see reference to the Money Laundering Protection Act. Um, Mr. Speaker, the current cooperative society act makes no provision in relation to measures to counter money laundering 
and combating the financing of terrorism. Through Doha Credit Union is classified as a financial institution under the Money Laundering Act and must comply with the provisions of the Act, having provisions in the substantive bill that governs cooperative will allow for greater compliance. Mr. Speaker, at Clause 97, we see increased internal control systems, including an independent and effective internal audit function, all part of sound corporate governance and prudent fiscal management. At Clauses 108, 109, and 110, we see the registrar being afforded the authority to conduct due diligence inquiries on the nominated members to ensure that persons elected to the board of directors and various committees are of fit and proper character. Mr. Speaker, delinquency has been an area of concern in the credit union sector. Clause 168 allows the registrar to issue guidance to ensure credit unions make adequate provision. Clause 197, investment of funds. There the credit union is given flexibility to invest surplus funds, which can result in higher returns to the credit union and which would redound to higher dividends to its members. At Clause 203 sorry, of this bill, we see the introduction of a stabilization fund, which will be used for strengthening the solvency and capacity of each cooperative society to improve competitiveness and growth among registered cooperatives and to strengthen the soundness of the cooperative societies and the security of the members. Mr. Speaker, one of the limitations of the current Cooperative Society Act is that it does not include a deposit guarantee facility. Mr. Speaker, it is submitted that it has been necessary to establish a deposit guarantee facility for credit unions to provide insurance against the loss of part or all of depositors' deposits. Mr. Speaker, Clause 206 creates such a facility. Clause 272 offers clear criteria as to when the registrar can appoint a receiver manager to protect the interests of members. Mr. Speaker, these and other clauses seek not to destroy the movement as some people thought, nor to increase bureaucracy, but to provide a suitable framework and governance structure for the sector to grow to the next level. Mr. Speaker, with the enactment of the harmonized bill last year in Anguilla, St. Lucia now stands as the last and lone state yet to enact a version of this harmonized framework. Mr. Speaker, we cannot delay compliance with regional and international standards any longer. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, with the passing of this bill, we would usher the St. Lucia Cooperative Movement into the next stage, and it brings me great pleasure to be part of the enactment of the regime that will structure the construction of further expansion of the credit union movement. Mr. Speaker, I believe that after the passing of this bill, stalwarts such as the founder, and I'm mentioning here founding members of the CSA Credit Union, now Janu Credit Union, Sir Julian Hunt, Francis Compton, Emmanuel Theodore. I believe stalwarts like our past registrar of cooperatives, Theresa Mason, past members like Roseman Taylor, who for decades joined persons like 
Victor Poyot, Kingsley St. Hill, your humble servants in giving voluntary service to Janu Credit Union in the little yard at the Chaussee Road, Mr. Speaker. And the hundred of volunteers who serve the credit unions throughout the country. When I think of persons like Mr. Prosper and Mr. Philippi of the Foshesha Credit Union, Mr. Elivik of the Library Credit Union, I think of Ms. Sylvester Seri, Ni Amos of Monry Pope, the late Cyril Matthews, and others, Mr. Speaker. These stalwarts, these stalwarts, would have the concerns that the credit union movement is shifting. But I know that they will be happy that we are putting a foundation in place for the next level. All of us here have seen the growth of the credit union sector. We have seen how they have, and some of them saying, we are better than the banks. Mr. Speaker, it is my humble hope that on the passing of this piece of legislation before us, I urge members to support the Cooperative Society's bill, and I look forward to the next level of growth of the credit union sector. I thank members.